Hello there, and welcome back to a new series called, well, I haven't actually decided what to call it yet, maybe like, um, a digressing or segue series, something along the lines, basically, where I talk about something that's not at all D&D related, um, and today I wanted to cover some Skyrim stuff, because, well, I've been playing a lot of Skyrim, and not a lot of D&D, and, uh, it's my channel, I can do what I want with it. <laughs> Um, so today I wanted to cover, basically, um, just to start off with a tier list, I thought that would be kind of a fun tradition, because um, I like these, <laughs> I like the format, um, but just go over a tier list of all of the skills in Skyrim and how effective they are. So this is um, pretty much going to be based on how useful using this skill is, and it's going to be sort of a combination between that and um, how useful the perk tree, like how good the perk tree stuff is. Mostly based on my experience in higher difficulties, where, you know, small differences actually matter because it's difficult. <laughs> and for the most part, I'll be ignoring the stuff with um, exploits, but I'll sort of touch on them and how they change things, in particular, like, with leveling the skills and stuff. Um, but, yeah, anyway, I'll just get straight into it. So, first up, we've got pretty much, in my mind, the poster boy of B tier, um, which is one-handed. So, one-handed's obviously, like, super versatile, and it's solid in pretty much all cases that you can use it, and you can use it with so many different things. You know, if you want a bit more defense, you can use a shield. If you want a bit more offense, you can use two-handed, and then, you like, you can mix in some magic really easily. Um, you know, and all of these, you can switch between them, and you don't lose a lot from doing that. Um, so it really opens up a lot of versatility options. Um, one thing that's also really fun with one-handed is using a dagger and going for a, an assassin-type character. Yeah, pretty much everything works with one-handed. Um, it's not too easy to level, but all of the combat skills aren't that easy to level. And yeah, um, it's interesting in contrast to two-handed, which I would put slightly below one-handed. Two-handed does more damage. Um, but I think it's just it just really locks you into like a very specific type of playstyle, um, unlike one-handed, and you know it's it's um, you don't have a lot of variance with it. Like uh, you can get more damage out with t t dual wielding, and you can get more defense with using a shield, because you can't use either of those with two-handed. And I don't really know. I haven't. Uh, looked into like the exact numbers and the difference of damage that you're getting and the um, You know the difference in slowness, but the slowness is actually like a big problem I would say it still ends up having a higher DPS than one-handed, but it's still like it's it's not that significant of a difference just because of how slow it is um, And yeah, but I will say I think two-handed gets the coolest weapons um, things like the Ebony Blade and the Blood Skull Blade are super interesting. I don't think One-Handed gets anything anywhere close to, like, that kind of, uh, uniqueness. <laughs> Early on with the companions with both of, the, both of them, you can get a follower level trainer and sort of abuse that to level. And two-handed, you get a master level one, whereas one-handed is only a adept, I think. So, like, to, you can get to 75 with one-handed, whereas you can get to 90 with two-handed if uh, you were so inclined. You can also use um, the, the, the sweep perk. It's quite nice for hitting multiple enemies. And um, that's, um, I think, a much better perk of a high-level perk than anything one-handed gets. I think all of the one-handed high-level perks are kind of mediocre. But overall, I still put it slightly below one-handed. Although I also have way more experience with one-handed than two-handed, so that might be a bit biased. Um, with archery, I think it's an obvious A tier. I think, yeah, I think this is kind of like obviously the, the strongest of the, the combat abilities. You know, you can get off a really, really good amount of damage from it from a, from a safe distance as well, so that's really nice for defense. Because um, you, well, you don't have to worry about your defense as much, because you can you can keep a distance, you can keep dealing a high amount of damage. It works really, really well with sneak. I mean, like you know, obviously got the the sneak archer meme. Like, there's a reason it keeps happening. It's because archery is really good, and it combines better than the other two with with sneak. Super early on, you can get Feindel as a follower with a um 
with you know an archery trainer that is also a follower and so you can just power level archery that way and get it up to 50 which is super nice um just like the other two it's not super easy to level later on but um like the companions you also get a follower trainer and um which is up to level 90 if if uh you wanted to do that and so it's you know it's maybe i would say a little faster than the other two but that's sort of just a untested experience i'd i'd say it's more likely they're actually all exactly the same but yeah but yeah there's not really that much to say about it everyone knows our tree and everyone knows it's good um onto the armors these were a little weird to rank i decided to put them into b tier but it's like you obviously want to be using armor you know, even if you're a mage, I think you're better off using armor than going pure mage, but it, it's an option, and if you're not going, then you, like, definitely use armor. So, you know, you can put these much higher and put these much lower. I think that's kind of reasonable. I, I wasn't sure what to where to rank them. And I think they both rank really, really close. They have, like, obvious advantages and disadvantages from each other. Um, early game heavy armor is, like, quite a significant bump in the amount, or early and mid game, in the amount of Reduc damage reduction you are taking compared to light armor. Um, although super early game, it's actually a really minuscule difference just because if you didn't know, there's like a 100 hidden armor rating that you get added on. So if you've only got like small armor ratings, that difference is not that big of a deal. But it's definitely quite noticeable later on for sure, and reasonably noticeable early on. Um, heavy armor gets a good trainer, whereas light armor does not, as far as I know. Um, so I think that edges it out early game as well. And I, but um, the disadvantages of of heavy armor are quite noticeable as well. The extra stamina drain and the hard uh, reduction in stealth. So if you're going, st if you're, if those are both things that matter to you, particularly the stealth one, then light armor is like far and away the best choice. Um, but I would edge out heavy armor early and mid game. But uh, late game with a hundred crafting, you can get. 100 armor rating in both of them so it's not like it doesn't matter like uh, at that point which you may as well take light armor but you can also take the if you are going to go heavy armor late game like please get the i think it's the conditioning perk where where you pretty much like uh the, the armor's weightless and you don't have the same stealth reduction and all of that um so that puts them like pretty much even it's not a, it's not a big difference but light armor is still better late game Personally, I don't like getting too many of the um, perks in either of the armor trees because uh, a lot of them rely on having full sets, and I don't really like wearing full sets of armor. I tend to have um, not not wear not, not wear a mask as as early as possible, so I mean, it is as reasonable. And um, even then, I kind of like to mix and match things a little bit, like use a dragon priest mask or something like that. So if I'm, I'm often not wearing full sets, in which case I don't really want a lot of the perks, but the perks are okay if you are invest investing in them, and there will be a point where you don't need any in them, so yeah, that's kind of up to you. Now Sneak is our first A plus tier. I think this isn't going to be much of a surprise. Sneak is excellent. It's really, really, really strong. You know, sneak damage adds a lot of damage for a lot of different classes. It's like every class, I think two-handed doesn't work super well with, but it's, you know, it's still there. Um, you can pretty much totally avoid encounters if you need to, like you can just sneak past everything. That's not how I play, but it's an option, and um, Sneak is really, really good at that, you know. Uh, playing an assassin type character with like an a, a, a dagger or a bow is really strong. Like Sneak pulls up both of these quite a bit. Um, that's one reason I was thinking about putting um, one-handed in A tier, is like Sneak is good enough with it <laughs> that um, it can pull it up, but that's kind of Sneak. Sneak's fault, not really the dagger's fault. Yeah, basically, uh, like, battles, with if you're good with sneak and you use it a lot, battles happen on your terms. Like, you can face exactly how many enemies you want at a time. Um, and, you know, ideally to be taking out just one enemy at a time instead of just being, like, completely swarmed. So, like, in terms of the terms of engagement, uh, sneak is excellent. It's it's awesome. Lockpicking is going to be our first detail. Lockpicking is something that does come up quite a lot, but it's usually not that difficult. Like, um, there's never going to be a lockpick that's, you know, you're going to struggle enough with that you won't be able to pass it without investing in lockpicking, unless it's like a master lock. And whenever there's a master lock, 
there's almost always a key for it. Like, it's, it's a very, very rare circumstance that you come across a master lock that you actually need to pick to get where you want, basically. And um, when locking, lock picking does come up, it's not even usually necessary to do it at all. Usually, again, there's often keys for everything, um, if it's needed to get anywhere. But also, there's, like, usually some, like, loot stuck behind a door, but... It's not always necessary to get that, you know, it's just a bit of extra loot, probably a bit of extra cash. So investing in lockpicking is like really a convenience improvement, and it's just a convenience thing. Um, you know, and like leveling without actually investing perks into lockpicking, just getting at a high level, doesn't even really make that much of a difference. It's also super annoying um, if you want to improve your lockpicking, there's no like flat increase to lockpicking, you have to actually get up to like you know adept locks or master locks or whatever if you want to do that so you can't just chalk like one or two points in and just getting a little bit better at those ones that actually matter because like all the low level ones novice and apprentice and stuff aren't gonna like you you'll be fine there's no reason to improve make those easier because they're already super easy so there's no like you can't really like dip into it you have to actually fully invest and it's and it's so bad that like it's a total waste to invest into it a lot of the perks just feel totally useless. Um, like, the only ones that affect things that aren't lockpicking is the treasure hunter and the other one that's in a similar vein, and they make such a minor difference that it doesn't actually matter, and they you need a lot of perks to get up to them. So, like, real, real late game, if you're at a point where perks don't matter, then yeah, grab those, because why not? But, you know, that's... The perk investment to get there is just not even a little bit worth it. So yeah, lockpicking is all the way down in D. <laughs> it's also super annoying to level. Like, oh, it's re it's just, just annoying. I mean, I know you can just get like a ton of lockpicks and just hold the side button and just leave it for ages, but it's like, it just doesn't. It's not. It's annoying. <laughs> so we're gonna put pickpocketing in D, but I think it's quite a lot better than lockpicking. Um, for one thing, pickpocketing in general can be quite nice, just to, um, you can pick up a bunch of extra gold from it, um, you can get a bunch of stolen items, so if you're with the Thieves Guild, like, you can sell that off for quite a lot. Uh, you can quite commonly find enchanted rings, so it's a good way to get some enchanted stuff and, like, disenchant that to get some interesting things, and, like, early game it's an option to get some nice, nice enchants just to answer your everyday gear, because... It's it's still you don't even find like really any rings until mid game, or like a bit in, and they're usually like you did rare enough that you won't find exactly what you're needing for quite a while. Um, whereas you'll find much more if you're just pickpocketing people. The extra pockets is a nice convenience perk, so real nice convenience there. Just get a hundred extra capacity carrying capacity. One potential option you have is uh, sneaking through like a whole camp and then just um, pickpocketing with if you've invested in pickpocketing you can steal equipped weapons and armor so you can just take everyone's weapons and armor and then just like come back through and and killing them all would be just super easy um, but you know you also might as well just kill them with a dagger at that point <laughs> if you if you got that good at sneaking and you want to invest all that time but I mean it's fun and it's and it's not completely useless um, you know it does have some combat use uh, you can also pickpocket from trainers, which is really, really nice to be able to do. I find putting poisons into someone is kind of cool, but most of the time you can just use a dagger or bow to apply poisons to people. But being able to just put them into their inventory is, you know, it's somewhat useful. <laughs> it's probably the easiest skill in the game to early, um, to level early level, just by doing it sort of how it's intended, just by pickpocketing a lot of people. Um, you know, there's Silda the Unseen, I think, as a trainer in, uh, White Run, no, Winterhold, um, and you can, like, get her to train you and then pickpocket the money back off her and then do that loop, which is quite a nice way to get it up early game and then just, like, you have to save resetting with pickpocketing people, it levels quite fast, especially when you start selling jewellery, um, but there is a way that you can pickpocket things with 100% certainty without any investment in pickpocketing, which does kind of uncut, undercut a lot of the, what I've said about um, that it's okay to invest in. Um, and that's using paralysis from something like a paralysis potion or um, 
or the I think it's the serpent standing stone. Um, if you use that and you paralyze them, and uh, you just like uh, keep trying to pickpocket them, and the second that they un they get unparalyzed but before they fully like come back, if you go into there, it'll say like you've got a zero percent or whatever chance you have to pickpocket them. But if you take it, you actually just always succeed. So. Yeah, that's um, that's a way you can pickpocket anyone um, all the time easily. But yeah, pickpocket is quite good. Um, I don't think it's as good enough to justify C tier, but it's as much better as like uh, lock picking that I would consider putting lock lock picking in an F tier below. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so yeah, here we are. On to speech. We've had uh, three kind of bad abilities in a row. So, obviously, you're going to buy and sell things a lot in Skyrim. Um, and speech is the tree involved in that. However, just straight up leveling speech doesn't make a massive difference on buy and sell prices. But it can be nice. And the only way you're going to get high speech is buying and selling things. So, it's not like you should level it, bef uh, level it up before you buy and sell things because it will automatically happen. Investing in it, I don't think is ever necessary. I think there's not such a stranglehold on gold that um, it makes a big impact, and and the investment isn't such a and um, you know, the perks aren't don't make like such a crazy difference that you'd be stupid not to. Um, so I don't think investing in it is a good idea. Um, you can get things like vendors having extra gold, and you can invest in things, and um, being able to buy and sell everything to everyone. Which is all good, but not at all necessary. Not even a little bit. Um, like, you can just, you know, attack them and then do, like, quick save reset. Which I think is something most people are comfortable doing. You know, it's, it's kind of a technically an exploit, but it's not, like, a big deal. Um, in which case, a lot of the perks are totally useful, useless. Leveling speech for the sake of persuasion and intimidation checks. Like, the actual perks themselves, I think, are totally useless, particularly the intimidation one, because by the time you can get it, you're already passing pretty much all of them. But those are never needed to achieve your goals, you know? Like, uh, you, you know, if you're trying to get into the, the College of Winterhold and you, and you pass a persuasion check, well, cool, but all it really took was you casting a spell, so... You know, whatever. And a lot of persuasion checks are like that. Like, maybe you pay, like, 20 gold or 30 gold or something like that. Like, it's it's never necessary to get a persuasion check. Um, the, the perk I like most is being able to bribe guards. If you rack up a really high bounty, it's just... And you've got, like, a bunch of stolen items on you. It's really annoying to have to go to jail. Or, um, or even just paying off your bounty. Just being able to pay a bribe instead is, like, much nicer. So, um... Yeah, <laughs> I like that, but also it's not, like, just that use is not enough to justify anything higher than D. So yeah, I like speech, I think it's worse than pickpocketing and better than lockpicking. So, on to alchemy. I think alchemy is easily, like, obviously, to me, the strongest skill in the game, by, like, a pretty significant margin. It makes every other skill way, way better, at very little opportunity cost to you. Um, and you can have, like, yeah, ton tons of different skills available. It's got a really, really low barrier for entry, like, it's it's quite good at every single level in, in alchemy, like, you, so you don't need to have a ton of investment for it to still be really useful. You can get a ton of convenience potions, like invisibility potions and that sort of thing, like any kind of restoration type potion. Um, it's just really convenient. You know, I mean, like, the, the main, main point is that it really, really enhances, like, anything you're going for. Any kind of magic skill, any kind of combat skill, sneak, you know, all of that. Everything else that comes before it makes it better. It's the best way to make money in Skyrim, unless you're, like, going full for exploits. But even then, like, it's it's really strong. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest exploit in the game, um, which is restoration potions, uses potions. Um, go figure. <laughs> Um, I think it's really, really easy to level. It's one of the easiest ones to level in the game, especially if you have like access to Hearthfire uh, farms and things. Poisons are really strong, and I don't see enough people talking about them. Like, um, I want to kind of showcase this a bit more. At some point in the future, I'm probably going to make a series of a, of a playthrough of Skyrim where I pretty much just exclusively rely on alchemy. Like, um, 
at the moment, I'm thinking rules would be like only allowed a uh, iron dagger and a hunting bow, and then um, yeah, pretty much just try and solve every fight and like barely any magic. Definitely no like destruction or like particularly offensive magic, um, and yeah, pretty much just rely on potions the whole time. It it will be pretty hard. Oh, and on on legendary as well, it will be pretty hard. But um, um, I think it's I think it's possible. It's it's more of like a thing that makes everything else way better, but it's also really really good on its own. So um, yeah, so pretty much any anything any difficulty you're coming up against can be made way easier by with the right potions. Like, so yeah, it kind of just cuts the difficulty <laughs> in half or like even in like quarters and things like that. Um, as I'll be talking about all this, all, all, with all the crafting skills, it's how you get really 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 strong gear. Just that just like permanently is excellent. It's done through the use of potions. Um, I'll also be making a cookbook at some point because I find all the ones you find on YouTube just don't really cover how awesome alchemy can be. Um, paralysis potions are super easy to make and just like crazy, crazy strong. Um, yeah, they can just, like trivialize a lot of different fights. As I'll talk about later, I, I like gave restoration an A tier just purely based on the fact that it can heal you really nicely. Um, it's a really convenient way to heal you, and um, alchemy does that, and that's like one of the least interesting things it does, but it does it easily. So like, basically, well, alchemy gets like an A tier with, without considering anything else. And so yeah, I think it's an it's an obvious S tier. It's the ob oh, I think it's obviously the best skill in the game. I don't see why other people. I, I, I hear the sentiment that enchanting is better than alchemy a lot. I just I completely disagree, and I'll talk about that later. But yeah, <laughs> alchemy. I think I've probably talked about it way too long. It's it's awesome. It's so good. <laughs> Now on to the first magic school with Illusion. I think this is uh, better than like the normal combat skills. Um, illusion is really, really strong. Like It can have a massive effect on a combat. Um, but I think the problem with it is it needs investment or it's not that good. Um, like A lot of the spells only work on low-level enemies unless you've got a bunch of perks in them. And uh, you also like need the higher level spells in which case. So like after a certain point, you're just gonna like if you're not actively using better illusion spells and actively investing perks in it, you're just gonna find it's like totally useless. Which is like this isn't really like it shouldn't be that much of a point against it because of course if you're using a skill you're investing in it, that's like the point of the tier list. But um, I'll go on to talk about it later as like why I felt that necessary to mention. Um, so basically, like it, like as I was talking about with stealth, it is a really, really good effect on your terms of engagement, um, which is something I don't hear talked about a lot. But it's, it's like really important um, with how you basically engage in your encounters. Um, so, for instance, um, if you're just dropped in the middle of a bandit camp with all of the bandits in the camp just like swarming you, doesn't matter what skill you're, use, skill you're using, it's going to be really, really tough encounter to deal with. Like, that's going to be you're probably going to die a bunch. It's going to be really frustrating. Um, whereas if you can pick off one enemy at a time, it can becomes like a total cakewalk. So um, illusion is great for that. Um, and yeah, so so calm, frenzy, and fear all make a really big impact with that. Um, and those spells in particular are really good for taking aggression off you. So it's also really good defensively because you don't need to worry about getting hit nearly as much if everything's like attacking each other or just not attacking anything at all or just um, you know running away terrified. <laughs> um, yeah, illusion is really strong. It's got some nice perks like quiet casting. I think is good even if you're not using illusion. Um, it works with things like shouts. So shout or shouts become silent. Um, all other other schools of magic become silent. That's really nice, particularly involved with stealth. I think illusion works really, really good for stealth, which is it like enhances it quite a lot. So that's an A plus ability. So yeah, um, a big a, a big problem with illusion is that sometimes it can do absolutely nothing. So with like any undead, any dragons, any high level bosses, often a lot of the time. Um, you know, it, it can be absolutely useless, and then all of that investment you've done in it is just totally wasted. Um, I don't think that's, like, I'm not going to talk about that much with everything, I think it's just because it's, like, decently highly ranked, you know, um, you wouldn't really expect that from, like, bows, swords, and um, two-handed and stuff, like, you, you'd think that investment would pay off at least a little bit almost all the time, whereas sometimes illusion is just totally useless, like, doesn't do a single thing. <laughs> 
Um, it's not too hard to level, it's definitely one of the easier magic skills, and you can kind of like power level it with Muffle, which is absolutely fine. Um, Muffle's another nice convenient spell that enhances Sneak. Um, yeah, it's um, it's quite easy to quite easy to level. I think a good contrast to Illusion is uh, Conjuration, and I actually rate Conjuration slightly better than Illusion. Um, just uh, let me justify why. <laughs> um, so Conjuration is really nice to back up pretty much every playstyle, every other playstyle, like pure mage, any kind of combat, archer, and things like that. Um, it's just really nice to, for one thing, even with like low levels, just um, send it a low level summon and it can just take a bunch of aggression. Um, things like flamethrowers can cover weaknesses if you're like one-handed, so you don't have really good things at range, so if you need range you can chuck out a flame, or more like a flame at arc than a flame thrill. Um, it, it doesn't work well with stealth, but it works really well when stealth goes wrong and you get found out. Because um, often those types of characters won't have a lot of health, and their defense will be really bad once they get found out, so it's good to chuck down a, a, a conjuration, like a conjure something up and, um, you know, pretty much get that to take all the aggression away from you. So I think it's quite it's useful more often than illusion is. It's never useless. On top of that, I think it's useful without much investment in it. Even if you just have like a high level conjuration spell, it's often if you've got enough magicka to cast it, like just as good with or without the perks. Maybe like slightly better with some of the perks. But you know, you don't need perks for it to work. Um, and the perk tree is also really good. Um, Twin Souls is is really, really strong and being able to have two of them. Bound, the bound, all the bound weapons are all really, really good early on. You know, like they're they're the, the same base rating as Daedra, uh, Daedra weapons, but um, obviously you can't improve them and things like that. So like mid mid late mid game, like the normal weapons definitely edge them out. Um, but they're also nice. Like if if you get like sent to prison or something like that, you can use bound weapons all you want. So that's another thing. It's like good as a companion to something else. Um, you can get some really, really strong summons as well, like uh, summon Conjure Daedra Lord is like, re oh man, that thing's like insane with how much damage it can output, um, and it's really tanky and things like that. Um, also using Dead Thrall to get things like Master Vampires is nuts, like it's really, really good, and also like Bandit Chiefs. So yeah, I think, I think it edges out Illusion because of all the things, like it's always useful, and it has a lower opportunity cost than Illusion does, so... Yeah, I think I think more often than not, conjuration beats out illusion. But it's also not like a massive difference. And I think illusion will have a greater effect on most combats than conjuration would. But you know, <laughs> um, I think it's also really really easy to level. Like even just using it normally, um, it will level up quite quickly. You know, just summoning bound weapons in front of things or conjuring stuff in in, in combats, it's it's going to level up quite quick, quite fast. Um, but also there's the soul trap cheese that just makes it like really really fast. I think faster than Muffle. And yeah, I'm fairly certain it's faster than Muffle, just using Soul Trap. Oh, and also Soul Trap is a thing. Like a, in terms of convenient spells, that's like if you don't have Soul Trap and don't have like another weapon that Soul Trap's like it's obviously really, really good. So you're gonna be using that a lot. But yeah. So destruction. Um I debated putting it in D tier, but I don't think it quite deserves that. Um the main problem with destruction is it just doesn't deal enough damage. Especially in like higher difficulties, it's it just you just can't get enough from it compared to things like um you know like the combat skills like it just de it deals a noticeably less than the combat skills, and you also have to maintain magicka and things like that like you never really need to worry about arrows but especially with like one handed and two handed you don't run out of you know swings. <laughs> Um, whereas you run out of magicka all the time with destruction, it's so annoying. And you'd think you'd be rewarded for that with, um, you know, higher damage output, but you're just not. There are some good damaging spells, things like Ignite is actually quite strong, but that's just, like, one, it's not enough to bring it all the way up. There's also, like, cool Lightning, I think, or Lightning Storm. Um, the must level Lightning spell, anyway, that does actually do a really, really strong amount of damage. Um, but that drains your magic like crazy, but at the time that you, you, you get it, you'll probably be able to get 100% magic reduction, in which case the damage output is actually really, really strong. It's kind of annoying to set up, but, you know, it's it's quite good. It is good if you get enchanting up and you can get 100% reduction in destruction, but, meh, it's, like, not enough to bring it up, really. 
uh, the impact perk is actually really good. Like, you do get a good amount of crowd control from the destruction spells, which you wouldn't really think, <laughs> you know, like, destruct the most noticeable, not notable feature of destruction magic is crowd control, but it kind of is. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the nicest part. Like, you can stun lock even, like, dragons with it, which is really good. And if you combine it with dragon rends, though, because they can just fly up and then it doesn't impact them properly. The the Augmented Flame, those type of perks, actually increase the damage of that enchantments do, notably Chaos, like, by a pretty significant margin. So, that's, um, that's like, super nice to get if you're going to, like, go for, like, max gear. You kind of need, the like, the destruction perks, because they actually make a really significant difference. That's honestly, like, one of the more notable things about the perk tree to me. Oh, and it really sucks to level, like... Oh, it's really annoying if you're trying to do, like, a pure mage, and, uh, like, early on, the only real way you have dealing damage is destruction. Like, oh, especially on, like, legendary or something like that, it's, it just, just moves so slowly. Like, it can be the main thing you're doing, and you're friggin', like, lockpicking or something. It's just way higher than it. Yeah, it's it sucks to level. Even if you're power leveling, there's not really, like, a good way to power level it. I would recommend a lot of like places show that you could you should put it up to like legendary and hit shadow mirror with like flames like just like like low level spells. Don't do that. That's way way slower. Use something like uh, lightning bolt and lightning rune is probably what I've done most recently. I find that good. And also don't do it on legendary. Do it on whatever you can without killing your shadow mirror too quickly. Um, as low as you can. I'm. Th Adept is usually where I'd go with that, but if you if you finding novice fine, then do that, and just like get it low, and then just um, wait an hour. Don't wait for him to regen health. Yeah, that's that's what I find destruction leveling much faster, but it's still not fast. <laughs> so yeah, destruction's got a lot of problems, but it's not totally unserviceable. Like you can get some damage off, and there's some good spells, and you know whatever. Anyway, that's another one I've talked about for for way too long. So, um, as I alluded to earlier, I think Restoration gets an A tier. It's um, you know, pretty much from healing alone. Like, it does healing well, and healing's really good. <laughs> um, you know, we all know that. I think, it, I do have some other notes. It's kind of annoying to level, it's not. But, like, it happens passively enough. It's not that bad. But if you're trying to power level it, it's kind of annoying. Uh, but it's totally possible. It does have some really nice perks in there, like uh, recovery, increasing your magicka regen, um, respite, giving you stamina healing as well, and avoid death is super nice to have. Um, also, necromage is kind of like low-key the best perk in the game if you're a vampire. <laughs> um, like that just has a crazy amount of interactions that just improve your like character in so many different levels so much. Um, so that's really really strong. I think wards are better than most people give them credit for. I've enjoyed using them. I get that they use way too much stamina drain, but if you combine them with ward absorb, I think it's really good. Like, um, normally the drain is like a lot less than what you'd be gaining from ward absorb. Um, so if you're going against mages and dragons and using wards just like when you get attacked with like a breath weapon or or a, or some magic, um, I think I think wards are, are quite good actually. <laughs> but I get other people's gripes with them. Um, but you know you can you can get more magicka, and you also, like, completely block the attacks from them, from, like, some of the strongest enemies in the game. Definitely most annoying to deal with. Um, you could also stack it with Azadal's Gauntlets to get even more magicka back. The way wards sort of work is the 25% less effective doesn't really actually make <laughs> that much of a difference. Um, I think the turn on dead spells are occasionally useful. They're pretty low level, but, I mean, the illusion spells don't work against undead, so... You know, there's that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of them. I don't think many people are, but they're they're cool. They're <laughs> cool enough. Um, Circle of protection. If you combine it with, if you have something that gives you spell absorption, it's like the Atronach Stone or something like that, um, or the the Atronach perk from Alter Action, you get a bunch of Magicka regen from it, just standing inside the circle, like, constantly, which is really super nice, like, even if you're not even, like, anywhere near undead, I'd, I'd still use it a lot once I have that, um, 
So that's just a tip for you guys. But yeah, basically restoration is here just for its healing. It does healing well, and healing's important, and it comes up all the time. So yeah, go figure. Hits here. <laughs> so alteration, I'm gonna uh, also put in C, but definitely higher than destruction. Um, I think the biggest draw for alteration is actually the perks, and nothing to do with the spells in in um, alteration. So um, things like uh, magic resistance, you can get up to 30% magic resistance, which is really, really strong, and also um, action arc, which is 30% spell absorption. So both of these are excellent. They make a, a pretty substantial difference against um, magic and Magic is really, really common. Dragon Breath, you know. Um, mages are an absolute pain in the ass to fight, especially early game. Yeah, I think, I think it adds a lot of defense in an area that defense is kind of lacking often and really, really good. <laughs> mage armor is strong if you are playing a pure mage and not using armor, but I would almost never do that. I wouldn't actually recommend using a mage armor. Um because it encourages a playstyle that I don't think you should use, <laughs> essentially. Um, like, even even if you're not at all worried about your defense, you know, uh, often I'll find I want to use, like, a Dragon Priest mask or something like that, uh, in which case it just completely ruins my mage armor. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> so within the skill, uh, you mostly want to be talking about the flesh spells, which are good, I think. Um, again, I think most people use them instead of armor, with mage armor, the, the mage armor perk, which does improve them a lot, but um, I don't think this is how that you should use them. I think you should use armor, and they're good on top of armor, especially, like, mid-game, before you've, you know, anywhere close to the armor cap, it can, it's, you know, not a non-trivial amount of armor off, off in time, and they're usually not, like, a big investment to make, and especially if you're not using that many spells in combination, if you're, like, a one-handed warrior that's you know, probably just using a bit of restoration, it's quite easy to add some alteration in there and just improve your defense a bit. Um, you know, even the lowest one is like 40 armor points, which is a lot. Like, the <laughs> a lot of your armor would probably just have, like, one of them would be like 40 armor points, so it's like adding another, like, chest plate or something on top. Um, yeah, I, th I think they should be used more. I don't actually know if they're not used that often, but I, I think they're not. <laughs> I definitely didn't use them for a long time uh, when I really should have been. But that's not a significant enough difference to like make a difference to your playstyle or your character or anything like that. It's just kind of a nice, con I, wouldn't, I don't want to say convenience sort of thing, but it's it's like a nice add-on that's you know like low effort, um, low effort, low contribution, I guess. Um, one tip: if you are using, if you're not listening to me and using mage armor anyway, you can use shields with mage armor, and it doesn't affect you know mage armor. You can you can equip a shield and you get some extra armor that way. Um, and use that all you want, and you won't get penalized for it. Paralysis is a really good spell. I really like Paralysis, and it's probably your only, like, true offensive type of option from Alteration. Like, it's definitely a defensive-oriented uh, school of magic. Um, and Paralysis, I guess, is technically more of a carrot control than an offense spell, but, um, like, it does that really, really well, and you can just take out key targets of the fight while you deal with other things, and then you take those, and then you go and take out the Paralysis... Par par paralyze people and you know it, it comes up a lot you can also use it to um as i said before with pickpocketing to get 100 percent pickpocketing from things like vendors um yeah par paralysis is a really good spell i really like it also mass paralysis is really strong um grabbing dragon hide i i actually don't know i want to know does dragon hide stack with having reaching the armor cap with just normal armor because I find it kind of unclear. <laughs> like, it just says you you ignore 80% of damage, which is also the armor cap. If you have max armor, you ignore 80% of damage. So I don't know if they stack. Um, that would be really cool if they did stack. I use them as if they do, but I haven't really noticed a big difference. I don't, I don't know. I haven't tested it properly. Um, alteration also includes a lot of, like, convenience, niche, like, little type spells. So things like Detect Life or uh, like clairvoyance, which are two like not that commonly used ones, but they they can be nice, especially if like you get lost or there's like some guy behind a cave or like physique life I actually quite like for in terms of the uh and what I was saying before in terms of engagement, like you know exactly where everyone is. But I mean even if you're not using it it's, it's pretty easy to predict where everyone is. Um like this is Skyrim, it's not <laughs> it's not gonna be super complicated. But it it, it can be nice. Um there's also things like uh mage light Transmute and Equilibrium are all, again, like, nice 
convenience type spells. Equilibrium is probably the only one that's like could be impactful, but it's not like it's not re it's not like a really good spell or anything. It's you know it can be quite dangerous. Um, so these are these are all spells that are like niche little tiny things that are, are nice when you use them and they're kind of neat, but not really like gonna change the way you play essentially. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, also, it's like, when you have a, a minus 100% alteration, um, alter, uh, alteration is the easiest thing to level up in the game. You just use telekinesis, you grab something, and because you're not having any magic drain, then you, like, fast travel somewhere and it'll just level your alteration up to 100, just like that. So it's sort of how you grind perks in late game. Um, if you want to use that, if you want to be using exploits, that's, like... That's enough to put it up a couple of tiers if you're worried about that, but I sort of said I wouldn't really consider the exploits. Um, the probably probably what is faster than that is if you use alchemy and make really expensive fortify restoration potions and just you sell those. So it's like so you're just selling one item and getting a hundred speech. Um, that is faster, but it's also more annoying to set up and kind of more cheesy than the alteration one, if that makes sense. But yeah. Um, that is, you know, an option, and otherwise, um, alteration, if you don't have the one minus 100% stamina drain, is kind of annoying to level, but it's not bad, it's nowhere near destruction, it's kind of probably easier than restoration, it's not as easy as conjuration or illusion, though. Um, yeah, that's, that's alteration. Enchanting, so, um, definitely going straight up into A+. <laughs> um, I think there's some arguments to be made that it's S tier, like, its end goal effect is, is kind of on par with um, alchemy, but it's got some real drawbacks that alchemy doesn't have that I think make make alchemy, an, like, distinctly better than enchanting enough that I would put them in separate tiers. Um, so that's why enchanting's here, but, yeah, basically it's got some similar similarities with what I was talking with, about with alchemy, that it improves almost all other skills in the game, like, to a significant margin. And actually, like, in-game, more than alchemy does. Um, although, with a lot more commitment to it, and also a lot more investment. So, like, in terms of commitment, um, you can't really, like, you only have, like, one set of armor, maybe two. It's quite, quite, quite impractical to be carrying around tons of different types of armor, because armor's heavy, um, and... You know, it's it's annoying to swap all the time and things like that. Whereas with potions, you know, it's it's really they they really light. You you can have tons of them, and you can just drink one whenever you need to use that particular skill. Like um, it's you probably wouldn't carry around you know a full set of even like sneaking and um, block picking gear, but a potion is enough to fulfill those niches just when they when you want them to come up. It also needs more investment uh, to make these improvements than alchemy does. I think you need enchanting to be a much higher level than alchemy does before it gets um, good and reasonable to use, and it needs a lot more money as well. Like uh, using just casually enchanting isn't really a thing unless you're just rolling in money because you don't really want to be using anything other than greater soul gems. Oh, sorry, um, grand soul gems, maybe greater. Um, if you have a bunch lying around, and those are very expensive unless you have just a ridiculous amount of gold. So, yeah, like, if you're not going to go through, like, stages of having different levels of enchanting. I mean, you will, but, like, not tons of them, whereas you with potions, like, it's fine to have, like, you know, at the start you're doing, having, like, those 22 heal, po heal health potions. That's still nice to use, and they're still impactful, but then later on you're going to have, like, 100. Um, or to actually often quite a lot more than that. Yeah, but, um, uh, alchemy improves enchanting, and enchanting improves alchemy, yeah. And also, when I said, like, enchanting does improve scales to a bigger extent than alchemy, it's not really that big of a difference. Like, you can get some really, really strong alchemy alchemy potions that just, like, 400% even, um, improvement. Like, uh, uh, whereas, yeah, also, also enchanting, like, does... I think a problem a lot of people have with alchemy is it's like it's a resource that you're consuming quite a bit. You can, it's easy to make tons of like unique potion you want, but um, I I I get the difference. Whereas enchanting feels nicer because it's permanent, but the investment to get there with enchanting way outweighs what it would take to get um, those ingredients for alchemy. So yeah, I think <laughs> if you put the effort you did into enchanting, you'd have essentially permanent use of your alchemy stuff. And you don't need to use things like 
the, the the difficulty of whatever you're facing is not a constant level in Skyrim. It's it goes up and down. Otherwise, you know, it would be really boring. Otherwise, so it's like it's you use those potions at those peaks, and that's where it matters. And then it brings that peak down. Um, I'm talking about this for a lot. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't think it's overly good early game um, with enchanting, like without actually going pretty full into enchanting, because like without a lot of perks um, and some expensive gems, your the enchants you're making are going to be quite a lot weaker than the level of enchanting that you just sort of find around. Um, so often those are better. the The main reason you'd enchant before its max is like to get a full set of something. So like one one you know, get four of one-handed or something like that, as opposed to, you know, because you're pretty unlikely to just find that round. But if you just find a one-handed improvement round, it'll almost undoubtedly be better than your enchanting until it's higher. It's kind of annoying to level. It's not that bad if you just, like, find a bunch of gems. And if you've got a bunch of money, you can just just, just buy tons of, like, petty gems and stuff like that. Um, like, raiding to ruins is a ruins is another good way to get a bunch of gems, but, yeah, it's kind of annoying to level. Um, but yeah, I mean, in particular, you want to be using enchanting and alchemy because the effect on other things is exponential with you use both of them. Um, like them together is like when you get into the things like four or five times improvement, whereas separately they're not that great. I mean, they they still deserve to be here by their own merits, but like using them together is like I don't like to go higher than S tier, but like them combined is like SSS tier or whatever. <laughs> um, that's not something you ever see in my tier list, but you know that's that's like it's so impactful having both of these together, and separately they they earn these spots. Uh, yeah, that's all I want to say. I don't really want to. I could ramble on about both of these uh, for a lot longer, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, onto smithing. So on to smithing. Um, smithing is. The worst of the the crafting skills, but like that's definitely it's definitely not bad. Like it's 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 the third worst crafting skill, and it's the third worst skill in the game. So like crafting is really good, <laughs> um, basically. Um, so it just it makes a massive improvement on on weapons and armor. It's needed to get the armor cap. I'm pretty sure like full Daedric armor with all of the perks and heavy armor still doesn't reach it. So yeah, you can't get the armor cap without. Um, smithing and reaching that's really good and it improves weapons like a ton um, just as you level and also smithing with uh, improving smithing with your other two crafting skills like these all work in tandem with each other they're kind of like exponential just improves them things exponentially like you can get armor cap with just random what like whatever armor set you want if you've got all of these maxed out and like just get really really crazy damage numbers with your weapons like 600 and i'll eventually make one that's use, making use of a lot of things and and you end up with like in the thousands uh, with your damage num numbers with weapons but that's using all three crafting things you know like you, it, it, re it does rely on other things um so yeah, it, it vastly improves your gear, but I think I put it I put it lowest because it's just not as versatile as the other two. Like um, it only really improves like it's it's just like raw stat numbers sort of thing. Um, you know, like it just improves damage and it just improves armor, um, like armor rating. Whereas like enchanting does everything and potions do everything even more than that. So like, you know, it's the worst of the three. I think obviously, but it's also like really 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 strong. You know, even if you don't use the other two, I'm pretty sure you can probably double the effectiveness of all of your stuff, which is massive, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think definitely A plus tier. Yeah, really good. I think it's also the worst crafting skill to level, but it's also not that bad. Um, I prefer going the Dwemer Runes route, so you can also get soul gems and just like getting a ton of metal, just giving it to your follower, and then just making a bunch of dwarven bows rather than the ring method, uh, which is like just mining a bunch of iron and then trans using transmute to get it into gold. The gold one's maybe a little bit faster, but I think there's enough benefits for the Dwemer Runes one. But I will also, also may be making like videos on crafting, how to get crazy, crazy ridiculous gear using all of these three, and um, how to also mine like, all the different ways of leveling them. Um, pretty much like different levels of <laughs> how to level all of them. Uh, nicely, and yeah, I think that's all I want to say for smithing. 
and uh, ending on a slightly boring note, uh, probably triggered a few people <laughs> for blocking fans, but I think I think blocking is solid and it deserves to go on B. Um, probably the bottom of B tier though. Um, I think it's a really good enhancement for like defense. It's a really good add-on. Um, you can only really use it with one-handed, although as I said before, like it's actually really good, kind of counterintuitively with a with a mage, like a going for a pure, pure mage especially, and it works norm decently well with normal mages. But blocking, having a shield up, um, having a shield really does add a, a lot of survivability. The shield bashes are really good for one v one battles, especially with VG soup, and you can like if you've got good timing, you can even stun stun them indefinitely. Um, power bashes is really nice to have as well. It's a lot of control, sort of where it's needed. Uh, you can get, going for like a sword and shield kind of thing, you can get overwhelmed if there's a lot of uh, players, like, you know, the shield only works in one direction, so um, <laughs> by players I mean enemies. <laughs> um, uh, honestly, I've never actually personally, uh, like, used any of the high level abilities in blocking by the time I get to like where where I've got like a high enough blocking stat, I'm usually barely using blocking. But that doesn't mean like that's more just the way I play. It's not. I don't think that's like an inherent problem with blocking. So I haven't actually used a lot of the high level ability. So I don't, I'm not really that qualified to talk about it. But um, like uh, they look really good. <laughs> um, yeah, I've heard sentiment that they're that they're strong abilities and they're impactful. Um, I'll just have to trust that. Um, but yeah, I don't think I don't think it really like overhauls uh, things like some of the higher tiered stuff does. It's not like a cheat code or anything. It's just solid. Um, I do really like, there is actually like a decent amount of skill cap with them. Um, you know, with like the stunning, you, you need good timing and it's quite fun to like look for specific animations and things like that. Um, you can also use blocking to think, uh, sorry, bashing to interrupt things like a dragon that's about to use a breath weapon. It interrupts that completely. So that's quite strong. Personally, I find it a massive pain to level, like just as you're leveling through it. If you do a bit of power leveling, it's not that bad, especially if you've got some good gear, like high level um, heavy armor and restoration stuff. Like it's it's definitely not that bad. You can just go up against a giant and like level it that way. But I mean, it's sort of uh, it's not it's not easy. Um, I'll say <laughs> to level in my opinion, and it's kind of slow just passively. Um, but it's it's definitely not the worst. I just find it a bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, totally possible. Yeah, um, yeah, that's blocking. Um, so this is my overall tier list. I think I'm quite happy with it. I don't tend to like I like avoiding the the pluses wherever possible. So like having an A plus tier, uh, I'm not overly happy about. But I think I think these abilities are definitely B tier. These are definitely above B tier. I don't like going, I definitely, much less than going with the pluses, I think it's having SS, and I think Alchemy deserves a tier on its own. I, you can make an argument for putting Enchanting above it, because um, I think Enchanting could be worthy of S tier, um, but there's enough of a difference between these two that I think they need separate tiers, um, and I think, because I think Enchanting is a good bit better than Smithing and uh, Sneak, but like not not a ridiculous amount. So, and these two are definitely better than uh, the A tier stuff. So, yeah, I think it's necessary having this A plus here, <laughs> and I think it fits. Yeah, overall, um, anything else I want to mention? Speech is kind of one that like you could make an argument that the, you know you buy and sell a lot, and so you'd have to use speech to buy and sell, so like if we ignore buying and selling the game, it's kind of detrimental, so that should go a bit higher. But I don't think that's quite what I was going for when rating these. It's kind of like, it's not necessarily ever using the skill, but it's it's it's, it's like investing in the skill. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's why I don't really count speech higher, but there's reason, and so, it's sort of same with pickpocketing and lockpicking, like if you decide never to do it, you know, lockpicking should be quite a bit higher, not really pickpocketing, it just sort of means you wouldn't do this thieves skill, but that's like whatever, but yeah, it's, it's kind of less about like ever using them, more about like incorporating them, you know, into your style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, I think that nothing, like, aside from lockpicking, or kind of all these bottom three, none of these are like 
unplayable. Even on legendary difficulty, you can make characters based around or heavily incorporate any of these skills, even like the the destruction and alteration and stuff. Like it's still, there's still you can do a lot with it. So you can't really go wrong. But uh, this is how you can go right, <laughs> essentially, as you saw high ones. Um, yeah, if you. Oh, and uh, I probably should have said this at the start. Um, I didn't make this tier list. Uh, Ling Hao Smith did. Sorry if I mispronounced your name and you're watching this. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, um, I think that's all I want to say. So if you made it this far in the video, um, that's, that's fucking awesome. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you, you know, disagree or agree also, <laughs> um, with a lot of my rankings, just let me know in the comments. I would, I'd be really interested to talk and like maybe further justify, uh, my position on them. I'd also kind of be keen to like, just make a video on any of these skills if you, if you're like, you're like, man, I really want him to talk a lot more about one-handed and go over a bunch of little tweaks and things like that, but, uh, yeah, just, just let me know, because, I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun, I'd be keen to do that. <laughs> also, in the future, I'll be doing, um, some stuff on crafting, how to get absolutely ridiculous, like, odd tier level gear, and, like, sort of the different levels of, you know, effort and, ex and exploitation you want to do, and, and the sort of stuff you can make. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Um, let me know if, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, if you didn't, don't, <laughs> let me know what you thought, and, um, subscribe if you made it this far, yeah, see ya.